During their explosive six-part documentary, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle delved into the details of their love story while also revealing the reasons behind their shock exit from the royal family. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex told their side of the story, accusing the media, the palace, and members of the firm of contributing to their departure, with allegations of briefing wars, mental health neglect, and shouting royals. Their decision to step back from royal life was swiftly followed by a meeting with the family's most senior members to talk things through. In January 2020, the late Queen Elizabeth II called for Harry, Prince William and then Prince Charles to meet at her country home in Norfolk, Sandringham. Days later, the Sussexes confirmed their plans to leave. Details of the secretive Sandringham summit are now coming to light, but in the words of the late monarch, some recollections may vary. In the second installment of Harry and Meghan, the prince said it was terrifying to have his brother scream and shout during the meeting. His father supposedly said things that simply weren't true and Her Majesty sat quietly taking it all in. You have to understand, Harry said, from a family's perspective, especially from hers, there are ways of doing things and her ultimate mission, goal, responsibility is the institution. People around her are telling her that proposal or these two doing X, Y or Z is going to be seen as an attack on the institution, then she's going to go on the advice she's been given. The Duke of Sussex's account of the summit has, however, been challenged, with some royal insiders claiming the late Queen played a much more active role in the talks. Speaking to the Sunday Times this weekend, a courtier claimed the Prince's version of events doesn't correlate with everyone else's experience of the Queen, saying the late monarch was sharp as a tack until the day she died. It's outrageous, they said. Harry never wanted to admit to himself that it was the Queen who said, No, you're out. He couldn't fathom that he wasn't the cheeky chappy who was going to sweet talk Grandma into getting what he wanted. Speaking to the paper's royal editor, Roya Nikha, another courtier added, The narrative has shifted from Prince Harry on the Queen. It was always my commander in chief, the boss. But when he was not getting the support from her he wanted, she is represented as a diminutive figure sat in the corner. That is another manipulation of the narrative to suit the outcome as felt by Harry. Advisors made recommendations to Her Majesty, but there was only one person making the decisions. To look the truth squarely in the eye. To realize your relationship has been damaged and to know it was his commander-in-chief who decided he couldn't have the half-in, half-out role he wanted, is probably too painful for him to accept. Moreover, the Duke suggested his wife was not welcome at the summit, claiming the family only agreed to sit down together after the Duchess had returned to North America. At the time, it was thought that Meghan called in from Canada but a statement from Buckingham Palace later said the couple ultimately decided that it wasn't necessary for her to do so. In Harry and Meghan, the prince recalled, it was only once Meg had left and gone back to Canada that it was then arranged that there was going to be a meeting at Sandringham on the following Monday. Meghan added, imagine a conversat, 